Hello, my friends. Let's start. Let's install Laravel. As you can see here, I'm starting with a terminal window. And first thing we're going to do is go to the folder where we want to install Laravel. So I'm using CD here. I'm going to my development folder and then to my English courses folder. And that's it. Here I want to install Laravel. So please go to your folder. And when you have done this, let's go to Chrome. Let's go to the web browser. I'm always using Chrome, by the way, because it's the best. And we go to the web page laravel.com. Once we're here, we click on documentation. We go to getting started installation. And then we just choose your first Laravel project. And here you see this line where it says composer create project. We're going to copy this until the second Laravel composer create project Laravel slash Laravel. Let's copy this and put it into the terminal. Now we have to decide which version of Laravel we're going to install. So if you look on GitHub under Laravel Laravel, you have the newest releases and here we have version 934. So this is what we're going to use and this is what you please are going to use because then you and I, we have the same version and nothing can go wrong. All right. So to do so, we just add a colon here and we say 9.3.4, I think it was, right? 934, yes. Now let's have a plank here and enter the project name, which will be Laravel 9 minus course, all right? Let's hit enter and install a Laravel, Laravel 934. Okay. It's almost through. And it is through when it says here, application key set successfully. Okay. Let's clear up here. Now in the terminal, we enter ls to see if our project is there and it is there. So let's go into this project folder. And now we can start the Laravel web server by saying php artisan serve. Let's hit enter. It starts this server here with this web address. All right. Let's open this link in a new browser tab. And here we have Laravel. So now please open this project in your editor. And I'm using PHPStorm. So if you think that PHPStorm is very expensive, you are right. But it's the best editor out there. All right. And if you are using another editor, that's fine. But please consider using the free test version, which is valid for 30 days, even if it's only for this project. It will be much easier for you to follow the course. You can get the free version for 30 day trial. If you go to chatbrains.com php storm and go on download. So anyway, let's just say file open. And then we go to this nice folder that we have and open our project folder, which is Laravel 9 course. 
Let's open it. And here we see our nice Laravel installation. And if you wonder, why do I have so many folders just to show one simple web page? Don't worry, you will understand this soon enough and you will love it. Let's close the readme here. And let's open the file, which is called .env, that one here. Because here we will have to put our database connection data. But let's create a database very quickly first. So please open the program that you use to administer your MySQL databases. I am using good old PHP MyAdmin, which is very old, but is very, very good, I think. And here I go to New, and I choose the very nice database name Laravel 9 minus Course. I will copy this name already. Then I click on Create. Then I go back to PHP Storm to my editor. And here on line 14, where it says DB database, I will paste my database name Laravel 9 course. My username is root and in my case I don't have a password. So I leave this empty. If you have a password, please enter your password there and then save the file. Now let's go back to the terminal. In the terminal I will open a new tab because this server I don't want to stop it, all right? So I want to leave it running all the time and I'm going to continue in a new tab. I say Command T to open this tab and you see we are in the same folder here. And here we enter PHP Artisan Migrate. I will explain you what this is. As you can see here, it did something. And when we look into our database, we can observe that Laravel created a few database tables for us. They are all empty apart from this one here where it says migrations. But here you just can see the other four tables that you just have migrated. So what is this migration? If you are new to Laravel, you might wonder, what the hell? <laughs> I can show you. If you open here the folder database migrations, you have text files for these four database tables. Here you have a description of the database table and this migrate command that we did here just creates the real database tables for us. Okay, let's continue in the next lecture where we install already our first Laravel plugin. See you there. Welcome back, my friends. Let's please go back to the Laravel documentation page. We are going to install a starter kit now. Here in getting started, you have starter kits. Let's go there. So they have two different starter kits which is Laravel Prees and Laravel Chatstream. Don't use Laravel Prees. It's maybe a little easier, but it's not so good. 
I always use Laravel chat stream. That's more professional. Let's click here. Here you have this text and down here it says official chat stream documentation. Let's open this. And here on the left you see installation. Let's click on there. And then it says here installing chat stream and we just copy this composer require here. We go to our terminal, paste that in and we hit enter. Now it's installing Laravel chat stream and it's already finished. Let's go back to this documentation and let's scroll down a little bit. Here below this red paragraph you see install chat stream with Livewire. That's what we're gonna do. We are gonna copy this command here and we also paste it in our terminal and hit enter. Okay, that's almost done. Now it's still running, it's still running. Okay, let it run, give it this time. We have time, right? We have time. Let's wait. Uh, still running. Okay. Okay. That looks great. Let's clear this up. Okay. We are not finished. Let's go back to this documentation page and scroll down a little bit more. Here we see finalizing the installation. It says npm install, npm run build, and again we have to do php artisan migrate. Let's do that. Just I want to show you one thing. If you try to reload the front end now, there will be an error because we are missing the sessions database table that comes with chat stream. But this error will be gone in a minute. Let's follow the instructions and let's say npm install and let's wait. Huh? It's done. That was fast. Okay. Let's say npm run dev. Let's see what happens now. Ah, we have a front end server now. That's interesting. We have to leave this open, guys. We need a new tab again. So again, on my keyboard, I hit Command T to open a third tab, which is also in our project folder. Very important. Now it said we should run the migration again. So let's do it. PHP artisan migrate. Here we can see we have a new column in our users table for two factor authentication. You know, if you want to log in somewhere and they tell you, hey, I sent you an email with a code to log in. That's two factor authentication. You don't have to use this, but it's a feature of this starter kit that we are using. And that's one reason why I'm going to use only, only, only a Laravel chat stream because it's just much better. Okay. Now that we did this new migration, which also created a new sessions table for us, if we go back to our front end, the error will be gone 
And here on the top right we have login and register. So if you want we can go on register here and just register a random user here. I'm always using a plugin in my Chrome here which is called form filler. Can you see this little blue thing up here? I'm clicking on this and it entered me some random data. It doesn't matter what you put in there because we will throw away this user anyway. Let's register now. And then you are in the Laravel chat stream dashboard. So this dashboard will later be the page where the customers of your e-commerce application are when they are logged in. Okay, you can see the name up here and you can do things like manage your profile, like password and stuff. And, but we will come to this later. Just you know that it's there. But let's go back to the dashboard here and let's go back to the installation page of Chatstream one more time and scroll down a little bit more. And here where it says Livewire, we copy this thing here in the white paragraph and go one more time to our terminal, paste it in and hit enter. So we published, like it says here, publish, we published the HTML of our installation because later you want to change this, of course. And I'm gonna show you now how we can change this. Let's go to our editor. And let's go into the folder resources, views, vendor, chat stream, and then components. Let's scroll down here and go to the file welcome plate PHP. Here it says, welcome to your chat stream application. We just write hello here. Let's save. Let's go back to the front end. And here we have hello. That's how easy it is. Now the last thing I want to show you is our new sessions table in the database. I'm gonna reload the database and here is the new sessions table. If I click on browse now, I can see already my user session. I can see the IP address and user agent, but I also can see my user ID, which is one. So here in the session table, you can see who is currently online in your application. Because this user ID of one, you also find this in the users table. If I click on browse here, here we have our random user and this user has an ID of one. So in the next lecture, we will create a few more users and I will show you a nice trick how I will start any Laravel application. See you there. Hello, welcome back my friends. So throughout this course, we will rewrite the database many times. So what we will do is delete everything from the database and write it again. And every time our user will be gone. So that's not good. So I show you a trick now, how to avoid to lose our users. Let's go to the editor. 
Let's go to the folder database, seeders, and let's open the file database seeder. Here you see some commented out stuff. This is what we are going to use. Let's take this lower part here and put it before the upper part. So I'm gonna cut it out and put it before the other stuff here. All right. And now let's remove all these comments here. So I'm gonna use Option Shift to pull down my cursor here and let's remove all these comments here. All right. Now let's use what we have here. Let's just click somewhere into the empty space to stop this blinking. I deleted the semicolon here. Let's put it there again. And now let's fill in this. So here where it says name, you put your name and I put my name. By the way, hi, I'm Martin. Let's put your name here and put your email address here. I'm putting my email address. But now we also need a password. So let's go to the next line here and let's say password. And here let's put the standard password that you are using. I'm using this one here. But the problem is the password in the database is encrypted. So for example, if you see here, there is just nonsense here because it is hashed your password. So we have to do this also. So around this password that you just entered, let's put a function. And this function is named bcrypt, bcrypt, like this, okay? And let's put our password in here. Okay, that's great. This down here, this line, we just leave it as it is. You might ask yourself, what the hell is the factory? I can show you quickly. The factory you find in the folder database factories. Let's open this user factory here. And here you can see a kind of blueprint for creating users. And they use some random name, which is here, the faker name, and some faker email here. Safe email, it means it's not a real email, so nothing can go wrong, wrong if you send an email there. And you always have the password, password. But anyway, let's go back to the terminal. Let's clear it up. And here, what we're going to say is PHP artisan migrate colon fresh. And this fresh means that the database will be rewritten completely. But we also add minus minus seed to seed our new users. Let's hit enter. It says here seeding database in the end. And if we look into our database, and we reload the users table, then you can see yourself here. This will be 
your admin user and this will be your user account that you will use throughout this course. And here we have another 10 users, which are just some random users. Let's continue in the next lecture, where we install another plugin and this will be the most important plugin in this course, because it will be the famous Laravel filament plugin. You find this if you go to filamentphp.com. See you there. Welcome back, my friends. We are now on the page filamentphp.com. Let's go to the documentation. And here we have already installation. Let's click here on installation. Let's copy this command here and paste it into our terminal. Let's hit enter and let's install another plugin. And here we are. Great. So I'm going to show you now what we just installed. Let's go to our application. Then let's go to log in by using this link here and log in with your email address and your password. All right. This is the dashboard for the customers. But now we have another dashboard. So if we go to our browser and instead of dashboard, we type admin here, then we have another dashboard, which will be only for your company. So this dashboard is there to administer your application. Your customers, they don't go here. This is just for your company's employees. But let's go back to the installation page and spice this up a little bit. First of all, let's do this. It's a little work, but you have to do it because soon you will have to update filament because filament changes all the time and you want to have the newest version of course. Let's copy actually only this line here where it says add PHP artisan. That's the only thing we need. Let's copy this and let's go to our composer JSON, which is somewhere here in your root directory of Laravel. Let's scroll down a little bit. And here it says post update command. And the line that we just copied, we will paste in there. Let's first add a comma here in the end. Let's go to the next line and paste in what we just copied. Now let's go back to the installation page. So this make filament user, we don't need it anymore because we have a much better user system already. So let's scroll down a little bit more. And this one is really important, publishing the configuration. Let's grab this here and paste it into the terminal. Let's hit enter. And here it said that it copied a file to the folder config 
into the file filament.php. Let's open this file. So we go to config and then filament.php. And here we can change some settings. First of all, in line 28, if you want to reach your admin panel with another word than admin, you can change it here. But we will leave it as it is. Let's scroll down a little bit. And then, and then, and then, and then, and then, here. Here it says dark mode. Let's put this to true, because this is much nicer. Okay. Let's scroll down a little bit more where it says layout here. And here we have line 209. We put is collapsible on desktop. We're gonna put this to true. All right. And a little bit more down here in line 213, where it says widths. Instead of this null here, we put full. Okay, like this. Let's save and see what we got. Let's change to the browser, go to our admin dashboard and reload. First, you see that this left navigation bar has collapsed now. But we can click here and here and here to switch it on and off. But now the nice thing is that we can enable the dark mode. If we click on here, we have this. And I think it looks really nice. And the third thing that we did, this full width thing, that means that we have more space here and we are going to need this space. So let's get rid of this admin here in the browser address. We are back in our starting page and this will be the front end of our application. So in the next lecture, we will install a really nice front end here. See you there. Hello friends. Remember in the beginning of the course, we had this course files for download. And in this zip, you have another zip with this estate agency HTML, right? Let's unpack this and see what we got. So. Here we got this estate agency folder. Let's open it. And here you have a index HTML. Let's double click on this. And now you have the web page. So uh, let's click around if you want a little bit. But um, actually, let's do some work. You know, because I'm German. We Germans, we always work. That's what my wife says, and my wife is from Brazil. Hola, to the bane. Anyway, let's go to the right mouse click and let's show the source code of this. Let's mark it all and let's copy it all. Now we go to the editor and then we go to the file resources views and then this welcome blade PHP. This welcome blade PHP is your front page right now, but we can delete all that. So let's mark it all and delete it all. And here we paste in the contents of the index HTML, right? Let's save. But if we look in the front end, there are no styles and nothing. 
To fix this, let's go back to the project folder and let's copy this assets folder here. Now let's go to another explorer window. Oh, let's use the same explorer window and let's go to our project folder and in the project folder we go into the public folder and let's paste this assets in here. Now if we reload the web page then we have our new starting page. But one more thing, let's go back to PHP Storm and let's rename this welcome blade PHP. Let's call it start page PHP because otherwise it's really not a very expressive name. I think start page is better. But now we have to look in another file and this file is the most important file in Laravel and it's called webphp. You find this file under roots and here is webphp. These are all your web routes. I just wanted to make sure that here in line 17 we have our start page. But as I did a refactoring in my PHP storm, it replaced here automatically with start page. But maybe you will have to write start page in here. In the next lecture I want to refactor this a little bit. Because I don't think that this screen fits so well to a real estate company. I want to replace this with blue and also write our company name up here. So if you want to do that too, please follow me in the next lecture. Let me just add that I didn't want to make fun of Brazilian people before. All the Brazilian people that I know, they work very hard as well. I love Brazil and the Brazilian people. And I'm very happy I married a Brazilian. So, see you in the next lecture. Hello, we want to change the green colors now into blue colors. You might think that this is a stupid move, but I want to show you something which I think is really important here. Let's go to the editor and open the style sheet. Let's go into the folder public, assets, CSS and here open the style CSS. If we scroll down here a little bit, you can see the green color values, but there are different ones. There are that ones that we just saw, but there are also a little bit brighter ones, but also there is somewhere where down here, there is a darker one. So now the thing that I want to show you is how do I find colors that harmonize with each other. And for this I always use Tailwind CSS. So let's open a tab with tailwindcss.com. Let's go to the docs. Here in the docs please go into this search field here and type color like this. Within this search result here, please scroll down until you find customization and customizing colors. Please click on that. Here you see the color palettes from Tailwind CSS. And I really like this color palettes because they are very harmonious to each other. I read a book from the guy who invented those color palettes for Tailwind CSS. And in this book, the guy, his name is Steve Sugar. This guy, he describes how he made those pa color palettes. What he did is not just use one color and make it darker or brighter. No, 
he really handpicked every single color so they look good with each other in combination. So for our example, we are going to use blue 800 as a darker value and blue 600 as a little brighter blue shade. Let's copy the value, the hex value here for blue 800. And let's go back to the style sheets. Here in the style sheets, for instance, on line 418, we have a pretty dark green color. We are going to mark this value with our mouse and use the replacing function of the editor. So I say Command R, then opens this thing up here. And in the lower part, I'm going to paste the new blue color like this. We have three occurrences and I'm going to say replace all. Now let's go back to Tailwind CSS and let's pick the blue 600 value. Let's copy this. And in the style sheets, we are going to look for some brighter green shades here. And all of them we are going to replace with our new blue shade, blue 600. So I'm gonna say Command R again. And I'm gonna do the replacement. This time it is 36 occurrences. All right, replace all. Wait, I did a mistake. Let's grab this again. All right, fine. But there is one more green color. We have to find it. And that's this one here, right? Command R, put the new color down here, replace all. All right. And I think that's it. If we forgot any green color, we will see in the front end. But I think that's all. So let's check out the front end. And now everything is in blue here. All right. That's in blue. Here the layover is in blue. Okay, that looks fine for me. Also, if we open this, everything will be blue. In the next lecture, I will change the favicon here. And I also want to change the favicon for our backend because I usually have a lot of tabs open in my browser and if I have a favicon here, I will find my project tab more easily. Hey guys, let's just quickly take care of our favicon. In your courses or in your course files folder that comes with the course, here you have this real invest favicon PNG. Please copy it and put it in the public folder of your project. Here you have this public folder. Everything that's visible in the front end goes into the public folder. So let's paste it in here. This other favicon icon here, we can delete it. So now let's just copy this file name here completely. Then for the back end, we open up config filament and here 
we look for favicon. Here it is. Instead of this null here, we put some single quotes and within here the path to our favicon file. So I just paste in the file name here. If we save and we reload our backend here, sure, we have this favicon up here. Now for the front end, we have to go back into our HTML. So resources, views, start page, plate PHP. Again, I look for favicon and here it is. Let's delete this apple touch icon just for now. And here where it says link and so on, again, I put an absolute path to my file name. So I say slash and then the file name, right? Let's save and in our front end, we also have our favicon. In the next lecture, we will take care of the company name and I'm gonna use this opportunity to show you how to define and how to use constants in Laravel. See you there. Hello, my friends. Let's do the company name now. Here in the file filament.php in the config folder, let's go to line 75. Here it says brand and it pulls a variable from your environment file. The variable name is app name. Okay, we can do that. Let's open up the environment file, that one here, and right here in the top, you have the app name. Let's delete this Laravel here, and let's put some quotes here, right? Because our company will consist of two words. The first word is real, then there's a blank and then we have invest. If you use something with several words here in the environment file, you have to use quotes. Okay. If we save now and we go to our backend, we reload, we have our company name here. Also, when we log in, we have the company name here. Now in the front end, we have this start page plate PHP, which is in resources views. And here we have the title. We can also write real invest here. And further down, we will have this thing here where it says, where it says now estate agency. So, Let's look for estate. And here in line 140, you have that company name. We replace it with real blank. And then instead of agency, we put the word invest. All right, let's check it out. And we have real invest here. But now I show you a better way to store the company data in constants. Here in your environment, we can leave that app name, name like it is, it doesn't harm. But usually here in this environment file, you only put constants that will change if you upload your project to a live server. So on the live server, you will have a different DB connection. And for example, you will have different mail data. But for constants that do not change, 
when you upload to the live server, you should use a config file. So here in the config folder, we create a new file and we call it company.php. And in this file, we just return an array. Like this. So in this array, you just can put keys and values. So for instance, we have the key name, which is a string saying real invest, right? Real invest, like this. And of course, we have to put our PHP tags in this file. I forgot that. Like that. Now, to access this, we use the config fun function of Laravel. Let's go back to filament PHP, line 75. And here, where we have this environment function, we use the config function now. Like this. Then, Within the single quotes here, we write company and then name. Let's save this and check out if it still works. And when we reload here, it still works. So here we see this typical Laravel syntax. First here we have company which is the name of the file in the config folder, company.php. And then we have the name of the constant. But let's go back to company.php because here you can also nest other arrays within this array. So let's put a comma behind real invest. And let's start a new array. We say address here and this address goes to another array like this. So within here we can for instance say city should be New York and street should be, for instance, 111 Main Street, like this. And now we can display this also in the front end, for example, all the way down here. So let's find the word email in our start page, plate PHP, command F, email, And it should be that one that is in line 993. I'm gonna duplicate this li here by saying command D in my PHP storm. Let's duplicate it twice. And here we say city. And here we say street. And here we also can use the config function. So let's put double curly braces here like that and say config again, like this, single quotes. And as you can see here, I already got some suggestions here. You will not see those suggestions because what you see here is a plugin for my PHP Storm. And I will tell you about this plugin in a minute. But anyway, we have this dot 
syntax here. So I have company.address.city and down there we have the street, right? Let's just put street here like that. Let's save and check out the front end, reload, and we have city and street. So whenever our company moves to another place, you just change those values here in your config files. And please be aware, it's not only for the front end, it's also for PDFs, emails, and all that kind of stuff that has to do with your business application in Laravel. You change it once here and it will change everywhere in your application. Now, let me show you that plugin that I showed you before. In PHP Storm, you can go to your preferences here. And here you have plugins. Here I search for Laravel. And there I have this Laravel idea plugin. As you can see, this is a paid plugin. But you can check it out. There's a 30 day free trial version. And after that, it's pretty cheap. It costs like about $3 and something per month. All right. In the next lecture, I will do one more thing for the setup of our project. And that will be that in our backend, we will change the colors here. We will have blue colors here instead of this orange because our company uses blue colors. And also here on the top, we will put our company logo. And after that, we will start a new course section where we finally will build our database here. Hi guys, here's my tip of the day. <laughs> Whenever you work for someone else, that means uh, either you are a freelancer, you work for another company, or you work for your boss, for, your, for the companies that, you, that employs you. Whenever you start a project, the first thing or one of the first things you should do is the branding of your application. Because one day your boss will stand behind you and say, ah, let me see how far you got so far. And then you show the start of your work. And if the boss sees the company logo and the company color, then it's a good thing because then they see that you're working because bosses always love their company logo and their company branding because they are very proud about that usually. So let's do that. First, we're going to remove this filament branding here. So in the editor, open again config filament PHP. Here we go to line 201 and set should show logo to false. Let's save, reload, and it is gone. Actually, you don't have to reload. You don't have to reload. I always say that because it was like that before. But now we have this wheat bundler here. And if the wheat bundler is working correctly, then you shouldn't be reloading your page because it will be done automatically. That's just a side remark. Okay, but anyway, filament is gone. Now let's put our own logo here on the top left. Again, I made you a logo, which you can find in your course files. And it's called Real Invest Logo PNG. Let's copy this and again, put it into our project folder into the public folder. 
Okay, now the next step is that you want to kind of work on this HTML here, but you might wonder where is this HTML? You might look for it <laughs> in your in your editor and you will not find it because first the HTML has to be published. And I show you a cool trick now. Whenever you look for some parts of some um, extensions or something and you cannot find it, then have a look in your terminal. And in the terminal, we can say php artisan vendor colon publish. And when you do that, you see a list of everything that could be published. So just for explanation, when we installed the filament plugin, everything was stored in your vendor folder, right? Here, when you install something, it will go usually to the vendor folder. And there you should never do anything, that's for sure, because if you do an update later, then it will be overwritten, that's bad right? And um, so this is taboo, never go there. But you can take parts of this vendor folder out into the rest of your application. And we do that now. So let's go back to the terminal. And here in this list, we look for filament views. And here on the right, you have a number. And this number in my case is 28. This numbers change, okay? Uh, the more plugins uh, you will install in Laravel, the longer this list will be, and then the numbers will change. So right now it is number 28. So let's go down here. And here it expects an input down here. And we just say, 28 in my case, in our case, right? Let's do that. And here it says copying directory to resources views vendor filament. Let's go there. So resources views vendor. And now we have this new folder filament. And here we have components. Okay, and here, well, actually here you have to search, okay. But uh, here's a folder that's called header. That looks good. Let's use that one, okay. And let's open up this index blade PHP here in this header folder. And here on line 8, you see this variable heading. Let's just write something in front of that. And let's check out the front end. And here is this what I just wrote there. So that's the correct position for our logo. So let's put an image tag there with our logo, right? So I say IMG. And here we have logo in the alt tag and the source will be slash and then real minus invest minus logo dot png. Let's save. Let's check it out. And here we go. So let's style this a little bit. Let's go to the editor. And here in before everything, I'm going to type diff greater than sign diff times two. I hit the top key and then I get something like this. And in the first of this inner diff, I'm going to put the logo. And in the other inner diff, I'm going to put this variable heading like this. And then let's give this outer div a class of 
flex. So here, by the way, you can see this little uh, images, this little uh, icons of Tailwind CSS. I'm using Tailwind CSS here because the whole filament plugin is styled with Tailwind CSS. All these classes, for instance, that you see up here, that's all Tailwind CSS. So what this flex class does is that the things are next to each other like that. Now for the vertical alignment, we add another class here of items center. And then let's give a few classes also to the image tag. All right. So first we want to have some space on the right, on the right for you. <laughs> we say margin right minus two. And then we want to give a size also because it was too big. So to give a size in Tailwind CSS, it is enough to give a width. So we say we give it a width of, let's say, 20. And if you wonder what all these numbers are about, I will show you. Let's check out the result in the front end. Okay, it's like this now. And these numbers you can find in the documentation of Tailwind CSS. If you go to docs widths, for example, you can find it also here in the left navigation. If you go to sizing and widths, and here you have these numbers. Okay. So there's a rule uh, that means one, the unit of one is the same as four pixels. So if I give it a margin right of two, it will be eight pixels, for example. And if I say the logo has a width of 20, it will be 80 pixels. So this goes up until 96 here. Yeah, you can check that out if you want. But actually, please stick with the width of 20 right now because we have to do one more step to activate all these sizes. And that is the next lecture where we will do the seaming of the filament plugin. Because we have to do a little stuff there with this tailwind uh, configuration and so on. And we do this in the next lecture. And anyway, we want to have everything in blue. See you there. Hello, my friends. After we integrated our logo into the, into the dashboard and all the other pages in our backend, now let's talk about theming in Laravel filament. This is an important lecture because we do some setup work here now in the background that you have to understand and have to know. Let's go to the documentation page of Laravel filament. Here we go to the admin panel and then we can scroll down a lot and let's have a look here on the list in the left bar. Here we have a um, paragraph where it says appearance. And within this appearance here, you have this page about building themes. Let's go there. Let's go through this manual together. Here in this line, they ask you to install a few libraries, but we probably don't need those libraries because we already have installed pretty much of it. But anyway, to be sure, Let's just copy this line and run it in the terminal. It doesn't harm if you do so. Let's run this. And when I say it doesn't harm, then I mean even if you have all those packages, if you run npm install, 
you also make sure that you have the newest version of those packages. Now let's look at the next task here. Here they ask you to do something at Tailwind config.js. This file you find in your root folder down here, Tailwind, Tailwind config.js. And let's see what they want. First, they ask you to add this line here. Let's copy it. That's really important. Vendor filament, blah, 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 blade PHP. Let's go here in this list where it says content and add this line. This makes sure that our Tailwind CSS has a look into the vendor folder where the filament plugin is stored. And when you, for example, update your filament plugin, the changes in the CSS will be registered. Now, they ask you to import this Tailwind CSS colors. Let's copy that line. And we put it underneath this default theme here. Like that. This makes sure that all the Tailwind colors that I showed you before are imported into Tailwind so we can use them. Now, let's take this colors part here. Let's copy from this comma up here to colors everything. Let's copy that and let's go to extend. Here you have extend and you have some font family stuff. We put our colors underneath. Here you can see we define in this example a primary color of blue. That would be the primary color instead of this orange. Let's go back to the manual. Now down here this requirement of Tailwind CSS forms and typography. We don't need that because we have it already down here. Right. Let's scroll down. And now we have to do something really, really important. And this is done in the file wheatconfig.js. Let's open that. Here they ask you to add another file to your wheat bundler configuration input. Let's copy this line here where it says filament CSS and add it here where it says input. I add it here after this app CSS. Like that. Right. The only thing is that this filament CSS does not exist yet, so let's create it. We go to Resources, CSS, and in here we create the file filament CSS. Okay. Next step. Here is something about the post. CSS config.js. This we do not have to do. We can skip it because if we look at that file, here we see everything is already like it should be. Let's close that again. Let's go back to the manual. That part here we can skip because this relates to Laravel mix. Laravel Mix is the old bundler of Laravel. Veed, the new bundler, was just introduced in July 2022. Before that, everyone used Laravel Mix for some years. 
So that's why they have this paragraph here. But as I said, we don't need it. Let's go down a little bit further. And here we have a line of code for our new filament CSS. Let's copy that line and put it into the new file filament CSS. Let's save. And then the last step you see here, they talk about register, registering in the boot method of some service provider this part here. So let's copy the complete part here that starts with filament colon colon. So when they say, say in any service provider, you can also add a new service provider, but you can also add a service provider that is already there in Laravel. Let's go to the editor and up here in the folder app providers, you have your service providers. Let's open up the first one app service provider. And down here you have the boot method. Let's paste in the code that we just copied. Now here you have two paragraphs using Vite and using Laravel Mix. And as we don't have a Laravel Mix anymore, we can delete the lower part here. Now you can see that some parts are yellow here. That means that I have to import some stuff. You can also see that up here, for, we could, for example, copy those two lines here, go up here to our import section, and let's import those things. Now everything is okay here, and let's save. Now in the manual, this was already the last step. So let's check out our dashboard again. Let's reload. And as you can see, everything is blue now. For instance, you have this blue button here. And also if I click here on the top right, you have some blue elements, all right? But as you can see, the dark mode doesn't work anymore because we have overwritten the Tailwind CSS settings, we have to activate the dark mode again. Let me show you in the Tailwind CSS page and let's look for dark mode here. Dark mode. And here you have dark mode basic usage. Let's scroll down here a little bit. And here, where it says toggling dark mode manually, you have this dark mode class. I will tell you in a second what this is. Let's just copy this line. Let's go to Tailwind Config JS, which is still open here. And here you have module exports. Let's go behind this opening curly brace and paste that in here, dark mode colon class. Dark mode colon class means that you can switch the dark mode manually. That's what we do in our backend, right? So let's save and check it out. Reload, go to dark mode here, and now the dark mode works again. Now here I opened again the Tailwind CSS customization of the colors page. And let's try out to have a primary color instead of 
blue. Let's try out this fuchsia here, for example. So down here in your Tailwind config.js, instead of primary color blue, we can write fuchsia here, like that. Let's save and see what we got. Let's see here and now you have fuchsia. But let's go back to blue. Right. Now we just have a little problem. As you can see, the blue of our logo is darker than this blue here. If I make a right mouse click on this dashboard here and I see what's behind this, a BG primary of 500. So they are using blue 500, that one here. But for the logo, I used blue 800. So let's fix this. Let's scroll down here. And here where it says color object syntax, you have a more detailed way to define your colors. Let's copy everything that is here in this curly braces. Let's go back to Tailwind config.js. And here, instead of writing colors blue, we paste in what we just copied. Like that. Let's delete the additional comma down here. Let's see the front end. And now you have those colors here. Let's go again to this color scheme here. Let's scroll up again until we find blue. And here I'm gonna use the hex value of the blue 800. Let's copy this. Go back. And here where it says 500, let's paste in that hex value. That is blue 500. Okay. Let's check it out. And now we have the same dark blue in the logo and in the theme. But now if we do it this detailed way here, we should now replace all the other color shades of blue with the according colors from here. But I did that for you. In your course files, you have this snippets folder. And in this folder, you have a file one underscore blue colors txt. Let's double click this and copy everything from here. And in our editor, let's replace the colors here. Like that. I even put a comment here to point out that the blue 500 is the same as the blue 800. Okay. So, Everything should work. And this was a long lecture, I know, but I think you now have a pretty good idea how to customize the looks of your Laravel filament application. See you in the next lecture. Hello, my friends. Well, you finished the first core section. Congrats. That's really good. So what I did now is that I created a PDF document for you. And I called this document memory sheet. I know this is not an English word, but <laughs> I like it. Memory sheet. I like it. Anyway, let's go through this and make, let's make a recap of what we did so far. 
So first we did all that installation stuff here, okay? So here you can see in, in gray all this uh, commands for the command line interface, okay? So uh, in the future, <laughs> if you don't want to go to this pages and look how was it, you just uh, go here and you can copy that stuff here directly into your command line. So we did the Laravel installation with the version optional. You don't have to do the version, of course. Then we did the chat stream installation. Don't forget to migrate here because otherwise you have this error. And also don't forget to publish the views because you will need them one day, right? Then we had this thing with our admin user, which <laughs> I call this headline, migrate fresh resistant admin user. Because we always do migrate fresh and we will continue to do migrate fresh. So in order not to use your admin user, you put this in your database seeder and then you just say migrate colon fresh minus minus seed. Remember? Right. Then we had the filament installation. Then we had this thing with the Tailwind CSS colors. I just put the link here for you. Then we had this thing about the constants, right? With the config folder, remember? And then this dot syntax here, right? So first the, the, the name of the file, then the array key, and then the sub array key. And then we had this thing that we wanted to put our logo here, right? And for this, we had to publish the HTML of filament, right? So uh, you do a vendor publish, as artisan vendor publish, and then you choose filament views, okay? Then we had the thing in the end with this filament theme, so we can change the colors of filament. And here, uh, you follow just these instructions, but you have to be careful. Don't use this mix old stuff. And uh, then I made a hint here for you with this dark mode, because the dark mode is broken. And then this here is how you can repair it. So uh, that's it for this core section. In the next core section, we will build our backend app here. And I also want to talk a little bit about how to make a concept for a web app, because I think to do a proper concept uh, can save you a lot of trouble in the future. To do a little concept, I mean, not overdo it, of course, but a little, you know, little preparation is good. And I will tell you a little bit about my experience when I had my own company. Okay, <laughs> so see you in the next course section. Hello, my friends. Uh, now we start a new course section. Hi. So now <laughs> what we have is this, but we want to have something like this or something like this here, right? So that's what we are going to do now. But instead of just, you know, stumbling into this topic, I want to do a little bit planning, you know, and I already started to draw a database diagram, but we will do this together slowly, slowly. So let me tell you, um, a few years back, I had my own internet web app creating company. So I did like small to medium size e-commerce applications for other companies. And just in case uh, that you wonder why I'm not doing this anymore, uh, it's not because I was not successful. I just stopped because it was really stressy and I married and started a family and I wanted to have a quite a life. That's why I returned to a fixed job. So uh, let me tell you how it was back then for me. So luckily in my case, I never had to look for customers because they kept on calling me these companies uh, 
because I did one job for one company and then they the, the company owner told their friends and then the friends called me who had their own companies. So it was really easy for me with the customers. So anyway, someone called me and then I put my suit and my tie and I drove there and I spoke uh, either to the owner or to the highest ranking manager in this company. And then it was always the same. They never have time, these guys. You go there into the meeting room and then they talk and talk and talk about their business, explain their business. And then like after some time, they have to go to the next meeting. And then what I did, I had this notebook and I wrote everything up, kind of looking them in the face and writing blindly in my notebook. Then I went back into my office and then I had a problem because I couldn't read my, 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 my things in the, in the, in the notebook. Right. But anyway, I managed. So it was like this, that my typical client was this, you know, engineering, technical, traditional company that deliver, delivered or produced and delivered uh, some technical parts to other companies. Okay. So that's how I got into this B2B business. B2B means uh, you have a business that makes product for other businesses, right? And these guys, they have already a website usually, but it is a static website. So they have like this one here, for example, they have a website where they have some images and information about their products, but uh, they called me because they wanted to automize their business. They wanted to move into the internet, meaning they wanted to have some configuration tools for the clients or even um, an ordering system or some online catalogs, you know, where all the products are, you know. So when I went back to the office after a meeting with those guys, um, I started to write up what are the main objects of this business. So the business is already running, but offline. <laughs> so, but what are the main uh, objects? And these are usually the customers that they already have and they it's some products and product categories it's always always more or less the same right so to come back to our project here uh, what we do now we have a look at this example website here and we imagine that this is a static website and we want to move it uh, into a dynamic website where all this content here is filled automatically with our backend. So the main objects that we have here in our example, of course, are these um, properties, this, this stuff that they want to sell, these houses, these apartments, and so on. So that's the main object, and that will be also a database table. This will be the database table properties. Okay. Then we have also, if we look here, we have the guys who sell these properties. These are the real estate agents. Okay. And these real estate agents, they are connected to the properties. Okay. So we have the agents and they have a connection to the properties. But then when we go here, if we go here to pages and we go to property single here, we can see that these properties, they have also some, what they call here amenities. I would call it features, right? You have uh, stuff like balcony, parking and so on and so forth. And this, we have to also make a database table for that, which are our features down here. And they are also connected with this intermediate table here to the properties. Okay. Then of course we have our users. This is a special thing I will 
tell you a little bit more about this because we will have different kind of users. We have the admin, then we have this agents, and then we have the customers. They all will use the same users database table. Okay. But uh, the customers actually, and also the, the sales, I mean, when, when we sell a house, we will get uh, some commission, some, some part of the, of the selling price we will get. Okay. And all this will be stored in the sales table. This is just a very rough, you know, concept right now. And maybe I will still change it or we will still change it. But uh, in the next few lectures, we will create a properties table where the objects, the houses are stored. And we will have these features, these extra features like balcony and so on. And we will have those salespersons, those real estate agents. Okay. We're going to start with those three database tables. So let's do it and see you in the next lecture. Hello, my friends. How are you? I hope you're fine. I'm fine. <laughs> in the last course video, I showed you this database diagram here. And we're gonna start building this by first creating our properties database table. Because this data is used in a lot of places in our app. It's used here and it's used down there with the latest properties and it's used on the single page in detail here. But it is also used, for example, if I go to the agents single page, then you can see also down there the properties of this agent. So, as you remember, in our uh, project, in the database folder, there is this migrations folder. And if I, for example, open here the create users table file, you see a description of the database table. But that's not enough, guys. I will show you now another graph that I made. Here you see a graph of the MVC pattern in Laravel. This is how Laravel works in general. So for every important database table, you have these files here, these files, okay? We will come to this later, but what I wanna tell you now is that there is another very important file that we need, and this is the model. The model is one of my favorite files, and you really need it, so you can access a certain database table. Well, luckily you can create most of these files automatically with a command on the console. So let's go to your console program and we will type here. Let's just type PHP artisan for now. Let's hit enter. And here you can see all the artisan commands, all the Laravel console commands. And if we go here to the letter M, you have all these make commands. So these are all the different files that you can create via console. And we will now create a model. So let's clear this up now. And now let's type PHP artisan make colon model like this minus H. H stands for help. Here in this help screen, you can see here in the options that you can create also controllers, factories, and migrations alongside 
with the model in one step. And that's what we are going to do. So let's clear this up again. And we're going to type PHP artisan make colon model. And then comes the model name. And the model name will be property. Now, it's very important that in this step you follow a certain convention. The model name should always begin with a capital letter, so a large P, and it should be in English and it should be singular, one property. This is very important and it can save you a lot of work. All right. Now, we continue here after a blank and we are gonna type minus M F C. Enter. So here we can see that a model was created, a factory was created, and the migration was crea created, and the controller was created. And here, if you look at this file name here, create properties table, what Laravel did, it formed automatically the plural of property. So the database table has already the correct name properties. And also the same with the factory and the controller. This will be in camel case, but we will see that. So for the rest of this video, we will work on the model and we will work on the migration. And just in case that you are a beginner in Laravel, here in this graph, which is also in your memory sheet, here in red, you can see the path in the application where you can find these files. So let's go to the editor. Let's go to app models. And here you find the property model. I always start with the model because there is one thing you cannot forget because if you do forget, you have an error later. We go behind this use has factory. And in the next line, we're going to type protected guarded. It's already proposed here. Protected dollar guarded equals an array like this. And here is a list of all the fields that you don't want to be overwritten accidentally. So here we put the ID field here, which is the primary key, and we want to protect this. Now let's open up the migration file, which you can find in database migrations. And here is the create properties table PHP file. Here you have the schema for your database table. Here you already have the primary key, your ID field, and you have timestamps. And those timestamps are two date fields, we will see it in a minute, where you have information when a data row was created or changed. And here in between, you put the rest of the fields. And what I do usually is that I go to the create users table file, which is also here in this folder. And I just copy some of these guys. So I have a kind of template to start. But you don't have to do this because I prepared a snippet for you in your course files in the folder snippets. You have properties migration txt two underscore. And I'm just gonna open this and copy this stuff here. All right, copy it. 
and then we go to our create properties table file and paste that in here. So here you can see all kinds of fields that we will need for our application. And as you can see here, we have all kinds of uh, types of fields. And these types, they kind of translate into MySQL field types. If you want to have an overview of all types there are, you can look in the documentation of Laravel here. And here you have all those different types. If you want to check that out later, I will put this link here into your memory sheet. Now, I also want to implement soft deletes in our database table. We scroll down here and we click on this lower thing here, soft deletes. Here we are gonna copy this statement here, table and so on, and also add it to our migration file. We can do that down here before the timestamps. By the way, you can see the, the typo is gray here, so we don't need these parameters. They are default parameters. Another thing that we have to do to activate those soft deletes is to implement them in the model. So let's go again to the property model. And here where it says use has factory, we put a comma here and we start to write soft deletes. I put a large S here and here I have it already soft deletes. So I click on that. And as you can see, my editor automatically imported the soft deletes up here. So those two things you need for the soft deletes, the import and the use. I will show you the soft deletes in a little while. But for now, let's just save everything and let's go to the terminal. So, as we added a new migration, we now can say php artisan migrate and it will migrate our new database table. Here we have it. If we now go to our database program, you see the new table properties here. And if we have a look at the structure of the properties, you can see all those fields. And you can here see the soft deletes with the name deleted at, and it's a timestamp, the same like created at and updated at that we had in this timestamp field. So in the next lecture, we're gonna fill some test data into this database. See you there. Hello, my friends. Please go to your course materials into the folder snippets and copy the contents of three underscore property factory txt. Let's take this text here. And in your editor, please open database factories property factory. Here you have this definition function. Within this return array here, you paste in the contents of that file. I will explain you the details later. Now, please open up database cedars database cedar PHP. Here, we're gonna copy the last line. I do that in PHP Storm with Command D for duplicate. So here, we're gonna create some 
properties. So I'm going to use the property model here like that. And I'm going to create 50 properties like that. Let's now go to the terminal. And here we're going to say PHP artisan artisan migrate colon fresh and then we add minus minus seed here let's hit enter all right now let's look into our database and when we reload our properties table here we can see our 50 properties seeded with random values now let's go to the browser and we open up <clears throat> the documentation of filament. The address is filamentphp.com. Here we go to the documentation and then here on the left we scroll until we see resources getting started. Here we click on creating a resource. We scroll down here a little bit until we find this line here. Composer require doctrine slash dbell. This is very, very important to save us a lot of time. Let's go to the terminal and paste that in and run it. I paste it in, let run it and it's just some installation and it's done. All right. Now, now we can create our first filament resource. So we type php artisan make me a filament minus resource. Now we give the name of the model, which is property. And now we will have some very, very important options. First option will be minus minus generate. Very important. Next option will be minus minus soft minus deletes. I make this a little smaller here, otherwise you cannot really, you cannot really read it, right? Let's make it even smaller. Minus minus soft deletes. And then just for demonstrations, uh, demonstration purpose, we say minus minus view. I hope I remembered that correctly. Let's hit enter here. Okay, success. Property resource was created. Now let's go to the browser to our project, which is here. And now let's go again to the admin page, right? Okay, I have to log in here with my admin data. And now here on the left, you see the properties. Let's click on that here. Now you see a table with the properties, but it doesn't look so good. So let's clean up here a little bit. Go to your editor, please. And open up app filament resources and here you have this file property results PHP. In this file, we first have a form here, which we will deal with later. So I'm gonna collapse this like this. And down here, we have a function with the name table. So here we're gonna delete the description field. And we also can delete um, everything done here, created at, updated at, deleted at, end date, start date, and visible also maybe. 
Ok, just for a start. No, let's leave the visible in for the moment. Ok, sorry about that. Like this. Let's check it out. Reload. And it's already a little bit better. Now let's go behind this make title here and let's make this sortable and searchable. Here we have sortable and then arrow searchable. And then we also want to limit this by saying limit and we give it a length of 12 characters. Let's just copy the stuff that we just did and do the same with the country. All right. Now the city, we do the same and the address we are gonna delete entirely. Here with the price, we do the same thing, but we don't need a searchable here. So we just delete that. And instead, we're going to put uh, another operator, which is called money like this. OK, now let's see what we have now. OK, now the title country is shorter, you know, and you have these three dots here. Um, the money didn't work because we forgot to put the currency, but OK. But anyway, it's more, you have a better overview here. Um, here you can see the title and the country and the city. We can sort. If we click on them, they are sorted alphabetically. But also we can search here. We can search for any word within title, country and city. All right. So we here, for example, I have South Africa. So if I type South here, we have all data that has to do with South. So here you have South in the country and all the other ones have the word South inside the city field. Now let's click here on this first check checkbox where we have the first record. Then let's go to these three dots here and say delete selected. Delete. Now we can go here to this filter symbol here and we can choose. We can say only deleted records and then we have the deleted record. But we can also click on there and we see the single fields. But this is just the view here. We can also go to edit and here we can say, for example, restore. When we restore, then we have an error, but we will fix this in the next lecture.